patterns and linear functions. In a relationship between variables, the dependent variable changes in response to another variable that we call the independent variable. In general, we call x the independent variable and y the dependent variable. It's not always the case because sometimes we use other letters, but that's the general idea. So x would be the independent and y would be the dependent. The values of the independent variable are called input values or inputs, while the values of the dependent variable are the output. What that means is you put in a number, input a number, x, and then you do something to it, and then you get a number out, which is your y. So you put in an x, and then you get out a y. That's kind of how we usually think about it. In this example, we're going to be using the diagram to show the relationship between the rectangles and the perimeter. Um, and we're going to start by using a table, and then we're going to write it in words, and then write an equation, and then we're going to graph it. Okay, so the table, if we have one rectangle, so that would be like this first one, we have one rectangle, what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is adding everything around the outside. So this would be 1, and this would be 6 over here. So 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 plus 1 is 14. So our perimeter is 14. And then when there's two rectangles, we have 6 and 6. So this over here is still going to be 6. 6 plus 6 is 12, and then plus 2 is 14, plus the two more down here, um, which will make it 16. All right, then the next one, uh, if there's three rectangles, we're going to have the 6 and the 6. It's still going to have the 12. And then we're going to add 3 and another 3, or 3 times 2. So that's going to give me 18. And 4, if we have 4, we have the 6 and the 6. So it's still going to be 12. And then we have four on top and another four on bottom so four times two those I mean four plus four or four times two it's the same thing so that would make this 20 so our perimeters are 14 16 18 and 20 and that would be how we could end our table just stop our table right there and if we want we don't have to show the work in here and just have the numbers, that's fine. But your numbers should be 14, 16, 18, and 20, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now that we've done the table, we want to write it out in words. What does this mean in words? Well, what did we do when we were doing the table? What we did was we looked at the number of rectangles. So we take the number of rectangles, so one rectangle, and then we had two ends here that were 1, so we multiplied that by 2, and then we have two 6s on every single one, there's going to be two 6s, so we're going to add 12, start with 12, and then we add 2 times the number of rectangles. So that would be our uh, written out in words. We start with 12, and then we add on 2 times the number of rectangles. So 2 times 1 is 2. So 12 plus 2 is 14, and that's correct. Uh, 12 plus 2 times 2, because there's two rectangles, is 14, and then so on. So that is cr our correct way to write it out in words. Uh, the next part says to write an equation. Okay, so an equation, we if we say that y equals the perimeter and x equals the number of rectangles, 
because we put in the number of rectangles to get our uh, answer here. And then when we wrote it out in words, we started with 12. So our perimeter is going to equal 12. And then we added on 2 times the number of rectangles, which the number of rectangles is x. So 12 plus 2x, or y equals 2x plus 12. And that would be your final answer. And finally, we need to graph it. So how I'm going to graph it is I'm going to change the numbering system, and I'm going to go by 1's on the bottom, and that's the number of rectangles. And then going up the side, I'm going to um, start at 12. I'll start at 10, and then go up by 1's. Okay, and that's going to be the perimeter. And you should be labeling these just like I have. Okay, so now if we look back at our table, that'll help us. So look back at what your table says, and it says that when there's one rectangle, um, there's a perimeter of 14. So I just put a dot there. Okay, and then when there's two rectangles, there's a perimeter of 16. Three rectangles, 18. And four rectangles, 20. And then it would continue on like that. So you just put dots here because it's not continuous. You can't have part of a rectangle. So you just put dots. You don't put a whole line. And that's your final answer. In this next example, we want to represent the linear function. The table shows the relationship between a, the number of photos and the amount of memory left on your camera's memory chip. Is the relationship a linear function? That's the first question. Uh, then we need to represent it using words, an equation, and a graph. Okay, so is it a linear function? When we're trying to decide if it's a linear function, we have to look at our x terms, which are our independent variables. Okay, so we see that it's improving by 1, it's going up by 1, it's going up by 1. Okay, so those are all going up by 1. As each of those increase by 1, these all seem to be going down by 3. Subtract 3 from each of those. So because they are even increments in between each one, you know, so plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 3, minus 3, they are all the same in the x's and the y's individually. It is a linear function. So, yes, it is a linear function because the s always increases by 1 and the y always decreases by 3. Now we want to write this out in words, and that's going to help us write it out in words. Okay, so what we need to do is explain what is happening. So, it seems like... Before we've taken any photos, we're going to be at 512. And then every time, every time we take a photo, we're going to subtract 3 uh, megabytes of memory. So, the memory left on the camera is 512 minus 3 times the number of photos. The next part here is we want to write an equation. Well, the words are going to tell us exactly what we need to write in our equation. So we have the amount left, the amount of memory left, which is y, is going to be equal to 512 minus 3 times the number of photos, which we called x. So we would write that as y equals negative 3x plus 12, or 512. And those, that would be a final answer. Either one of those is correct. And you should graph this one the same way that we graphed the last one. You just start when 0 is 512, and then at 1 it's 509, and then 506, and 503. So it should be uh, points going down. 
In this last example, we want to decide if these ordered pairs actually represent a linear function. So in order to do that, what I would do is whenever you are given a list of pairs, graph those pairs and then decide what you're looking at. So graph each individual part. So the first one is 0, 2. So I'm going to go over on the x to 0, which is not going over at all. And then I'm going to go up on the y to 2. So it would be right there. So I'm just going to put a point right there. And then the next one is 1, 4. So I'm going to go over to 1 on the x and then up to 4 on the y. And I'm going to put a point right there. Okay, so far it's a line. Um, the next one is 3, 5. So I'm going to go over to 3 and up to 5. Well, it's already not a line, but let's graph the last one anyway. So the last one is 1, 8. So I'm going to go over to 1 and up to 8. So this is not a line because everything's kind of in random order. They don't, we can't draw a single line through all of the points without it being curved. So the answer is no, this is not a linear function. because there is no line through all of the points. So that's all you have to do is once you graph it, that's proof that it's not a line. So just explain what is happening. So those are your notes over patterns and linear functions. Go through some practice problems and make sure that you actually understand how to write it out in words, how to write an equation, how to put things into a table, how to read the tails, and how to graph them because it will all be important. And then you can take your quiz.